Hi, I'm Jim Pence and welcome to this week's See the Light video blog. Well, I'm going to show you a kind of a twist on a color wheel. It's actually uh, not a wheel, as you can see. It's a triangle. And uh, it's kind of a fun way to play with color. Uh, one of the things that you want to do as you begin to work with uh, color is to just experiment with it. See what uh, different colors do together. Uh, this is particularly true with watercolors. So I'm going to show you today uh, just quickly how to do a color triangle and uh, not only is it uh, instructive but it's uh, pretty fun too. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is obviously get a piece of uh, watercolor paper. Uh, again the better the paper uh, always the better the paper the better your results are going to be so if you haven't ordered uh, Arches uh, 140 pound cold press paper yet or gone to uh, a an art supply store and gotten you a sheet or two uh, be sure and do that or the alternative is buy the best watercolor paper that you can find uh, there there are a good quality papers out there that you'll find in tablet form but just remember the adage you get what you pay for so the 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 less expensive the paper uh, the less satisfying your results are going to be but what I've done here is I've drawn a just a real basic triangle I didn't measure it or anything so it's not even you know even on all sides it's just a, a a very simple triangle but then I drew another smaller triangle inside of it and the purpose for that is I want these channels here because this is where we're going to put our color but before we do that we're going to do something that's going to kind of help control the water a little bit uh, so what I'm going to do is take a little bit of tape this is painters tape you can use regular masking tape but I'm going to use painters tape today and all I'm going to do with it is I'm sitting here trying to get the tape going. There it is. Okay. It took a few seconds. Okay, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to put the tape right down the outside edge of the triangle. And I'm going to do that on the bottom. And I'm going to do it on the other side. So far so good. Now you might ask why I'm using painters tape. Sometimes masking tape, when you use it on a watercolor paper, it will uh, tend to tear the paper. And so uh, you want to be careful that you don't damage your paper. Now I'm going to also put it on the inside here. That's a little bit trickier because I don't have quite as much finger room and I've got pretty big fingers. But I'm going to try to black out the entire inside of this triangle. So why don't you do that? Get you some paper, draw a triangle, remember one outside triangle, a smaller one inside, give yourself a little bit of room there, and then uh, get some tape. You can use plain old masking tape. Go ahead and do all the way around the outside and completely fill in the inside and leave yourself this nice white channel here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish and by the time I'm done uh, we'll be ready to go. All right, you can see I've got my triangle here, and this is obviously where I've masked out. Uh, this is a good practice technique, incidentally, for watercolors, because uh, you'll find as you do different types of techniques, there may be times when you need to keep the... Uh, water or the color from hitting a certain part of the paper and uh, so masking tape or liquid masking uh, are a part of uh, the whole watercolor process. Uh, now what I'm going to do today in doing a color triangle is I have a brush here that's about the same width you can see as the uh, little white triangle I have there. What I'm going to do uh, is we're going to put one color, one of our primary colors, I've got, remember, red, yellow, and blue. I'm actually going to be working from my soft pans over here, uh, but I wanted you to see that I've got these. I'm going to get some of this other stuff out of the way real quick so we can just focus on this, okay? But I'm going to put red down in this corner, I'm going to put yellow up in this corner, and I'm going to put blue in this corner. But before I'm going to do that, I'm going to get this all wet. So I'm going to come in here into my water, and I'm just going to 
wet it down. Now what's really fun with this is you're going to get to see how these colors kind of interact with each other. Okay. Now, most of the time, again, when I'm doing something like this, I say I want the paper to, to glisten, but not to be dripping. Okay. But I want to get the paper fairly wet. So I want, I'm, I'm coming back over this a number of times so that that water is going to soak into the paper. Incidentally, if you use 300 pound paper, this works a lot better. Okay, simply because the paper is thicker and heavier and it can hold a lot more. Okay, I'm kind of tilting my paper here. You can't really see the glisten very well, but you can see those drips there. You know, I want to kind of get rid of some of that. I'm going to come in and just blot some of this extra water out. Okay. Let's get some of those extra drips out. There's a lot there at the bottom. Okay, now my paper's glistening nicely again. I, I really can't see it too well on the picture, but paper is glistening good. So, so now I'm going to come in very quickly, and I'm going to get some red, and I'm going to get some blue, and I'm going to get some yellow, and we're going to put them in the three different corners of the picture. Okay. So right now, I am picking up some lemon yellow. I'm going to put it right up at the top here. I'll put a pretty good amount of it there. So a really nice bright yellow. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush out really quickly. Blot it out a little bit. Make sure I got the color out. Okay, and now I'm going to go to some vermilion, which is another nice rich red color. I'm going to put that down here. It's almost an orangish red. Okay. And then I'm going to clean my brush out real quick. You have to do this pretty fast because once your paper starts to dry, it's not going to work as well. And I'm going to come down here for some cobalt blue. And I'm going to put that down in this corner. Get that a little bit thicker. It almost matches my tape here. Okay. Now that I have it in both corners, or all three corners, huh? Supposed to have three corners in a triangle, not just two. All right. Clean my brush out again. Okay, now you see the colors are already starting to spread. I want to encourage that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to actually grab a little bit more water and I'm going to pull the red and the yellow together. And you can't see it very well, but those are blending together and creating a bit of an orange. I'm going to come down here real quick with the blue and begin to pull that over. And the same thing with the red on this side. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water in here because this is already drying out. I draw that green and that blue together a little bit. Then I'm going to tilt a little bit and as much as is possible kind of let these colors blend into one another. Actually I'm going to pull a little bit more of this yellow down. And a little bit more of the blue up. I 
All right. Now, as you get your colors to mix, hopefully you're going to see a little bit more I'm just kind of running out of color here so I'm throwing a little bit more back in there we go what I want to do is get it to the point where these colors are mixing right there there we got it okay again you want to see a nice green beginning to show up there as the yellow and the blue mix. And obviously you want to see a pretty nice orange coming down here. So you may actually have to go back into your color a little bit. Just to kind of help it along. If the, if the paper dries too quickly and you don't have quite enough color there, it's not going to work out real well. Okay, we're almost there. I'm going to throw in a little bit more red or vermilion. A little bit more cobalt blue here. I'm going to try and pull these together. I need more water. They're drying out on me. Because we want to get a nice violet in here. stop. If you work too much then it ends up turning into mud and mine's getting almost at that point. I've been trying too hard to get my purple down there. That didn't really work out very well but the idea in doing a color triangle like this is to start with your primary colors here and then blend them in the middle of the triangles so that you can see that transition as the colors change. Now let's take the tape off and see what happens and see how it looks. It's still wet. Normally I'd probably wait till I had it dry to do this, but uh, I lost my hair dryer, which is what I used to dry my watercolors with, and so I'm gonna just go ahead and pull it off and let's see what we've got. And there it is. We've got our color triangle with red, yellow, blue, and some orange and some green and uh, again kind of a muddy purple my purple didn't come out very well but uh, this is part of learning and experimenting uh, with color and it's something that uh, you want to do uh, on a regular basis uh, particularly if you buy tube watercolors uh, then you want to learn how those colors are working together every time you get a new color you need to test it out see what it looks like see how it mixes with other colors uh, we'll do some more stuff uh, regarding color mixing down the line but uh, I hope you'll try this exercise it's kind of fun and a real easy way to play with color uh, until next week this is Jim Pence with see the light uh, have fun and we'll